So I'd like to talk a little bit about sort of the classic paper um, that Doyle did, John Doyle did in, in 1978. And one could get deep into the analysis and there's whole conversation around that. But to kind of get the point of where was this going, this was a really amazing paper in its, in its own right, but it was set up in a beautiful way. What you're definitely looking at is this conversation of where there's guaranteed stability margins for, L, for LQG or linear quadratic Gaussian, which basically means you've added an LQE, so that's another way to talk about it. When you have linear quadratic estimation as well as linear quadratic regulation. And they mean kind of different things. And the whole point in this conversation was to say that there aren't guaranteed margins. In other words, that you could always start to find for any system where these margins could go to zero, or there at least as a margin, but the margin gets vanishingly close. And if you can show it in one case, then you can kind of see it for all of them. And this was an actually a really amazing paper, but it was like one page. And so there's a lot to roll out. There's a lot of mathematics to roll out. That's a whole conversation unto itself. But at, at a high level, it started off with just assume I have a two-state system. And actually a fairly straightforward one, one that we actually know that also will have noise, um, both in W and in V. But the size of the noise, the variance of the noise is all designed in such a way that, and, and very carefully designed in such a way that not only is the observability and controllability very state, very solid, and you can get to everything very easily, and you have noise and variances in the system here um, that are of exactly the quantity that you would want, such that you could actually analytically solve for k sub r and k sub f that they have uh, a very repeatable structure that both have one parameter f and d in it, that both are parameters that look the same, one related to what is my relationship between sensors and actuators, and the other one is a question of what is the noise level. And again, sort of has two plus whatever those values are. This is the real value. You can kind of work with this. Everything's in really good shape there. And so as a result, you can then even talk about what is my model system and how that all solves out. Great. And so what you can then do is take this sort of structure, combine it with the original um, vector structure with that it has its now new regulation terms in it, has its has an actuation for R, but adds one more thing if you look at the system. So you have your system here. This is good, right? And then you have your LQR, which is if I knew all the X's, uh, all the state variables, I could guarantee I could get it, get it to work. The problem is I don't because I don't want to put that many sensors and things and so on. They're costs. Those are real cost questions you've got to deal with. So all of that looks like there. I see where my noise terms get added into the system. But then I add one more term, which is M, and this is really a term about margin. In fact, the term M kind of almost implies margin. And what you're kind of saying is, hey, maybe there's some issue in how we come get this input. Now, maybe that came from not getting the model quite right. Maybe there's something not quite known perfectly here. Fair enough. This is why you want to have margin, because you just don't always know. Maybe someone adds something in at you at the last moment and you didn't realize it. Fair enough. So there's this variable M, and this is the thing that we're actually now going to look at. And you have to understand, this whole thing had to be developed analytically so I could actually answer this question. And to get through all of these steps analytically is a little bit tricky. It does make for, for a wonderful problem. In fact, I would certainly recommend anyone who's going through a, you know, a more serious, uh, anal serious linear systems class going through this to kind of work your way through it because it's actually a really good simple example that you can actually see numbers all the way through. And so if you do that you see you get these double matrices, you get an M, this is what the matrix is that you get and here's where your two M terms come in. Very interesting of the combination of terms and the choice of letters. Moving on. Um, but what you end up seeing here is that the simple term is that this becomes vanishingly small margin. And you say, well, how do you see this? Well, what you would argue for is you want to know what the eigenvalues of this matrix are. It's a fourth order system. You can find the fourth order roots. We're in great shape, right? It takes, okay, one, there's a lot of math to roll this thing out. That could take you a while. Two, 
solving fourth order equations is can get very very messy analytically again remember the point is analytically is what we want here well it does turn out that you can at least you know you can solve all the way through it um, even in the paper John Doyle says well this gets very tedious but he brings out two things which he says here's the linear term and the constant term and what he says is here's the analytic form for the linear and the constant term and this is what kind of helps us pull out the intuition and he says they both need to be positive all right first thing you go where does that come from and one could get into this in a more detailed mathematical sense but let's just take a look at it in a very simple sense if i had a, if i had a quadratic equation here's the linear term here's the constant term if you look at it we know what the roots of this are and what we would want is in general a0 and a1 to both be positive if they are i can get stability of some sort right uh, if it turns out that one of these are negative, well, if a1 is negative, my eigenvalues go positive. If a0 is negative, then one of them could have an issue. So I want them positive. Okay, so here's where this gets interesting. And by the way, first thing is they can definitely be positive. You might go, well, wait, I have a d plus an f and a minus 4, but remember that both f and d start off with 2. So yeah i'm probably i'm pretty good there you know that i'm not worried about that one and this other one i can pretty much assume i can get positive okay so you're like great both terms could be positive at the same time right uh, but take a look at some things here i i want to look at the range where m is close to one and m m minus one is really what i'm going to be thinking about as my margin right i mean how far away from one which is what it should be am i looking at that's the first case first part to think in mind the second part is to assume that assume that f and d are large and in particular we have products of d and f right here and so that now means the product is large and you say well that's fine it's still no problem right until you realize that the linear term is m minus one and the other one is one minus m which means that if m is greater than or less than one one of those two terms is negative ha ah, now i've got a concern right because they say, say m is now bigger than 1, well, as d minus f gets large, this quantity can still stay positive, right? If m was 1, I guarantee that they're positive no matter what, right? That's cool. But if I, now I have to really get 1 minus m to be pretty close to, close to being small, right? So... I only have a small range in which I can do. The same thing happens on the other side. And so what happens is as these parameters D and F get increasingly large, then M minus one gets ever so close to zero. And D could get large just because, well, the noise could get larger, right, from the sigma. F could get large because, well, after all, you know, I get this rate, this sort of combination between sensors to actuators. Yeah, that could go off the rails and that could be a problem. And again, I'm looking for any sort of bounds. So what happens is eventually this gets very, very close to zero. And I have to always be aware of that. And so this is the core of the paper, which is a very short one page paper that leaves out most of this conversation, but has all of the pieces and has all of the nuggets all the way through. And it's a brilliant conversation all the way through.